This NBA playoff predictions edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet ten dollars at WinBet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Coors Light. Get mountain cold refreshment delivered straight to your door via Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash SGP. That's CoorsLight.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Stable Duel. Stable Duel is a horse racing DFS app where you can play free and paid games for real cash prizes. You can win as much as forty thousand dollars with one entry. Head over to StableDuel.com to get started today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to five hundred dollars in bonus cash. Head over to PropSwap. Com or download the PropSwap app today. And of course, make sure to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Hey, hey this, this is, is John, John Sally, Sally, and you, you listen, listen to SGPN. Let it ride. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the one of your aim with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. What's up, NBA? Sean, looking sharp. Looking sharp. Oh, don't watch out. You need that finger to shoot. I realized I forgot to uh, toss it to the camera. Oh no! I was so jacked up. NBA Sean's back. I'm rocking. Well, a, you know what it is. Philly's undershirt. With M- NBA Sean doesn't shoot free throws underhand <laughs> like Will Chamberlain. That's for sure. Yes. Uh, so I and I also had a giant hot drink that I was worried about knocking over. So <laughs> didn't didn't go 110 percent. But uh, we got an awesome show for you today. Going to get into the NBA playoffs. So much to get to. First off, we are uh, we're giving out more cash. I don't know why we keep doing this, but five hundred dollar NBA contest. You fill out a bracket, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Sports bracket. Gambling. That sounds complicated. Uh, it's not, Ryan. It's even <laughs> a, even our listeners can figure it out. Hardcore degens that they are. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash NBA playoffs. Sportsgamblingpodcast com slash NBA playoffs. And the uh, it's here. <laughs> I'm Jack for the NBA. Yes. Getting some hoop going. Oh man. If you're getting down on NBA action, you got to do it over at WinBet. Bet big, win bigger with the WinBet. 100% deposit bonus on the casino up to $1,000. Only. Perfect. If uh, a game slows down, fire up the old uh, blackjack in the WinBet app. You can also bet $10, get $200 in free bets. That's right. That's a pretty sweet promo as well. And they have a uh, same game parlays, AK wins own build your own bet feature. So much to choose from so much action. All you gotta do is head over to winbet.com, or download the win betting app offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state where playthrough remember is available. If you or somebody who knows a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Ryan joining Let's us. Let's go, baby. On the line to talk National Basketball Association. He is one of the uh, co hosts of the NBA Gambling Podcast, Moonoff Manji, aka The Machine. What's up, Moonoff? Gentlemen, what's going on? NBA playoffs is here. This is crazy. The season went by in a blur, but uh, thanks for having me on again. And I'm excited, man. Yeah, of course. And also joining us, one of your fellow co hosts from the NBA gambling podcast, Mr. Terrell Furman. What's happened to Terrell? Oh, it's great to be here. And guess what? Oh, my Memphis Grizzlies have the two seed and they're <laughs> looking really, really good. I'm telling you they're looking great. It's no, it, be here. Memphis is a sneaky team in the West for sure. I think who was it, Ryan? Cause we just did our futures draft. 
And I feel like one of the NBA guys suggested taking the Grizzlies to win the West. Yeah. We, we got snaked in the futures draft, but that was definitely on our big board. Yeah. And shout out to the guy who took him a uh, full, like three minute monologue on why it was a great pick. So uh, he <laughs> must be aligned with you Terrell. Uh, look, I, I, I think if you're making a dynasty draft pick for big dick energy, yes. Jaws on the list pretty high, right? Oh yeah. I mean, he's had some amazing even as a guy who's a little more casual for some of the regular season, some of those plays he made that went viral, like the clips, uh, there was that, uh, that, uh, what was it? That crazy inbound shot that, that or sorry, that inbound pass yep. that someone threw to him that he put up immediately. Steven Adams, Steven yeah. Adams tossed it to him cross court and he put up for right before the buzzer. Ja is a superstar. Like he is a superstar in the making. People are actually paying out, out of Memphis market to watch him play basketball. That makes you a superstar where you get people that are not even fans of the team paying for you to, to go in there and see you play. So absolutely Jaws a superstar and he's going to take these playoffs by storm. I mean, that's a, that's a karmic uh, player for that, that city to get that yeah. great fan base. They, no, deserve, I mean, they deserve a, a and grinder. Memphis is, is, is going to be fun too. I mean, I, if you look at the regular season, Phoenix kind of ran away with it in the West, but Memphis being a sneaky uh, two yeah. seed, very, uh, very live dog for the conference. We I, I've noticed not even in the play in tournament, Los Angeles Lakers, nowhere to be found moon off. Uh, what, what's your take on the Lakers season? Uh, they sucked. I mean, I can't, that's pretty much sums it up for them. I mean, look, as soon as they made the Russell Westbrook trade, and we talked about this on the NBA gambling podcast, that this team was screwed in my mind because he just didn't, I don't think he would have fit in with, or with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And, and that kind of came into fruition. They were also hampered by injuries. Anthony Davis missed more than half of the season. Uh, LeBron was the only played 56 games for the uh, Los Angeles Lakers as well. And they don't have much of a, uh, a depth or a bench. So when you're paying the amount of money that you are to those three guys, you're not going to have much depth there. So I think that was pretty much the demise of the, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers this season. This has to be a low point in the Lakers uh, franchise, not only yeah. not, not making the, the playoffs or even the play in tournament with this amount of talent, but when Irving magic Johnson goes on national television and is you know, lambasting the front office for getting rid of Alex Caruso. Isn't that a low point in the, the like, oh, we would have been better if we had Alex Caruso. Like, come on. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't disagree with him. Like they you gave are a away big Alex Caruso guy. I mean, he's a hustle guy. He gets you some boards. He's a bald guy who can dunk. I mean, there's certain, there's certain <laughs> stuff stick together. Exactly. Are we going to call that dunking? Are we going to call <laughs> yeah. that dunking? Uh, you know, it's a, he's, he gets the ball up pretty he high near the rim. <laughs> But I mean, I don't disagree. Like they got rid of all their role players who played defense and hustled and like allowed LeBron and you know Davis to carry the scoring workload and and do everything else. But yeah, and bringing in Russell Westbrook was just kind of a kind of an unmitigated. Who disaster. saw this coming? I don't know. I think everyone did. Mm -hmm. uh, Terrell, what about you? Any big surprises? We'll kind of glance at some of the uh, win totals. I know in the uh, let's see, you were on for the East show. You went eight and seven hmm. with your win totals. Moonoff also eight and seven. Kramer Surprising. and I, not as good. What uh, do you mean, not as good? Well, I was seven and eight. You were six and nine. Although we did really well in the West. I went eleven and four. You went ten and five. I didn't do great on my locks. Moonoff nine and six in the West. Two and one in his locks. Is this so. an error? I picked over on the Lakers. I don't remember <laughs> doing that. I was still. I was still smitten by LeBron, maybe. Terrell, what what were some uh, what were some big surprises as far as regular season goes? That Ben Simmons didn't play and fucking <laughs> cash my my miss on the free throw. Oh. I got pushed because he didn't fucking play. <laughs> That's, That's right, man. That's the no. I'm literally sick because they gave me plus money, <laughs> plus money for him to miss that free throw. And you're telling me that over the course mm. of an 82 game season, he doesn't play a game. <laughs> Not one. He doesn't get fouled one time because he doesn't freaking play. Like only Ben Simmons can make me push, could push the ultimate lock of the entire season. There's no way he was making that free throw. And does Ben Simmons ever play basketball again? Oh, supposedly <laughs> he's. I, I don't know. And 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 Munaf, I'm sure you're on top of it. But I heard yeah. he's he now they're gonna bring him back for the playoffs. Maybe even the play-in game. This to me is insane. The guy. Took an entire year off, half uh, being scared, half back issues, and then you're just gonna put him out there in a playoff basketball where the intensity is the highest. 
I, th- that to me is insane. W- what do you think is going to happen with Simmons, Munaf? Uh, so, well, from what I'm reading, is that they are targeting him to return in that first round. If they do make it there, they'd still have to get to the play-in <laughs> tournament. But uh, look, we, we've talked about this on the NBA Gamble podcast with Terrell and, and ZB and 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 with Dan as well and McKee that they don't ne- really need to rely on Ben Simmons. Uh, as much as they did with the Philadelphia 76ers, right? Sixers, he was the second best player. They're supposed to be the second best player. Now you come over to a Brooklyn Nets team where it's Kyrie and Kevin Durant having to be that guy. For Ben Simmons, if I'm Steve Nash, I'm telling him, hey, go guard the opposing best player and lock him down. That's all you need to do. Offensively, let Kyrie and Kevin Durant handle it. And I think that's that's where the conversation has to start. And if you have a wide open dunk under the basket, you, your ass better be dunking that ball <laughs> or you're going to be sitting next to me real quick. So what do you play him at center? So he hangs out in the paint. I mean, you can't you can't put him on the wing. Look, I, we I got a new puppy at home, Sean. Yeah, and um, you know when the when the puppy makes has an accident inside, <laughs> we're trying to get my youngest daughter to train the dog that this is bad, and so you got to pick her up and you know let her know it's bad and take her outside. But when she picks her up, she coddles her, and by by doing so, the punishment isn't really sticking yeah. because. The the puppy's being coddled. It's like, oh, I get attention. I'm coddled. You're gonna bring this. The reward <laughs> is he gets to play in the NBA playoffs. It is a insane. stage for real men. A stage where battles are fought. A stage where the NBA players actually try. The reward is bent. Now he can play. The stress gets ratcheted up, and now he's mentally ready to play. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's not coming after people with mental health, but how do you want to play this guy in your team right now? <laughs> it's insane. If, um, if you're a Nets fan, which I think um, Scott Rochelle may be the only authentic Nets fan I've ever come across he was, in my entire did, life. When we met up in <laughs> Vegas, he was walking around with like a throwback Derek Coleman jersey. I, I mean, <laughs> respect. I, I've been to Brendan Byrne Arena back then when the Nets, no one was there to watch the Nets. So if you're a Nets fan, there's no way you're like, yeah, bring this guy back. You're from Jersey. You're from New York. Maybe you're from Connecticut. You probably don't have a lot of tolerance for fucking people who aren't willing to put in their time, put in the effort. I just, again, I don't see how this makes your team better. I I understand why theoretically it makes your team better. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause the, the rebounding, uh, the, but, you know, the assist, the defense, but I mean, again, last time he was playing basketball in a professional setting, he uh, was in a practice where he also had his phone in his pocket, and then he got kicked out of practice. And you're gonna the next step is gonna be a a, a must win playoff game. All right, makes no sense. Sorry. All right, I got off the podium. Well, right. Sounds like you need a moment to oh. chill. Perhaps you should crack open an ice cold Coors Light. You got a puppy at home. You got you got your soccer uh, team. You got a coach. You sound like a guy who's always on, and you deserve a beer that's made to chill, aka Coors Light, cold package, cold filtered, mountain cold refreshment. It is uh, delicious, goes down smooth, crisp, and refreshing as the Rockies. Perfect for a moment to unwind. I'm a huge Coors Light guy, love it, drink it all the time. And you can get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to slash SGP. It's CoorsLight.com slash SGP. And remember, you always celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. What about the uh, before we get to and we're gonna hit on the playing games? Uh, you know, some ATS picks, obviously. Then get then talk on some series stuff. Wait, as we're well. making picks. Yep, Ryan. Oh, this is one of these uh, podcasts where we <laughs> make some picks. My wife asked me what was on. This. It was all passes today. <laughs> my, Only leans. My wife asked me what I was doing today. I'm like, I'm hosting a podcast <laughs> where we talk about sports gambling. That's that's the big thing uh, on the uh, slate today. All right. Never a I, I have to ask, what is <laughs> what is going on with Zion and the New Orleans Pelicans? Because I've heard the stuff that he's injured, but then you see these videos of him doing like under the leg dunks. No, Terrell, what's going on? What's going on with Zion? Fill it, me look, in. It's a it's a padded court. It is a padded court. People, uh, the casual NBA watcher doesn't realize it, but if you watch the video again, the the court literally sinks. The man is not that heavy. Well, he could possibly be. So that's man not is outside heavy. the realm possibility. But <laughs> but 
it's a padded court. They use it for players so that they can get action in when they're hurt, but not too hurt where they can't just go and do casual things. So, of course, he's going out, showing off a little bit. This is a little uh, play by his stepfather. I think his stepfather just doing the thing that any dad would do and be like, hey, look, my son ready to go. It ain't it ain't him. It's y'all. It ain't him. Like, mm-hmm. he, he can go and give y'all a bucket whenever. He was just talking shit. That's all he was doing. So... I think now is so wait, the it's, it's the Pelicans uh, that are that are not wanting to put him out there to possibly risk further injury, or is it or is it him not saying he's ready? What what's the issue? No, so I really don't I really don't think he's ready. I at this point I really don't think he's ready. I think that is something wrong with him, and now they're trying to figure out how can we get out of this bad situation. That's why they got CJ. They were like, we need an insurance policy, so when we move on from Zion, we can ex- we can explain it to the fans. And so I think that they realize they're in a bad situation that this guy could be somebody that has injury problems going on for the rest of his career. And they may not want to deal with that anymore. We need to give uh, we also need to pay Shaq some respect. Shaq played a lot of years, carrying a lot of weight around. Oh, yeah. We oh, predicted oh, this right. Zion situation. I, I mean, no surprises. Uh, and, and I, w- I was going to comment on this. Uh, one, one of the little ones is actually going through some PT right now and they have one of these padded courts. I've oh, seen really? it. Yeah. So it's like, it, it totally can, uh, you know, I could see how you could make something look really cool when you have the confidence of landing on that. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, Sean, what have we learned about the body? It's a temple. Yeah. And uh, output equals input. So maybe he <laughs> needs to tone down on, I mean, no one is surprised. We shouldn't be surprised. The NBA is a funny place. No, M- it, it, NBA Ryan is chuckling that Zion. <laughs> how many games has he played in his career? Eighty-five. Yeah. Not far uh, off. Yeah, you're probably pretty man's, close, sir. Let me see. Anyway, we, we're saying a lot. He was of the mean first, things. the first half man, half a season. Yeah. No, but the the, the, the uh, it was, you know what? He is the first 85. product of the clip generation, like in a big way. Zion blew everyone's mind. With his ability to jump as a fat man, that's mm. really—he's fat guy in a little suit doing a dunk. That's what he is, right? He's <laughs> You're not comparing a, him to Chris. He's Ryan. not a Greek god like Dwight Howard. All right, he always just, comes back to Dwight Howard for Ryan. And how he got so <laughs> underlooked because yeah, no Howard one took him seriously. Is the greatest because uh, as a coach myself, it frustrates me to see how much wasted fucking potential <laughs> that guy left out there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to talk about Zion anymore, but I think it's just funny that we like we're so like everyone is like are people sad that he's he's busting out of the league? No, I I, I just Greg Oden was a sad story. The, Zion, the Pelicans, not a sad story. To to the the point that they were saying, like bringing in CJ McCollum, yeah, they're smart. kind of a fun scrappy team now. If they had Zion, they could really maybe make some noise in the West. I was just trying to get the. Uh, Get the story straight there. All right, enough well, messing around. And by the way, a, a stepdad getting involved with some of these millennial tactics not cool. <laughs> like it's one thing if you're in your twenties. Has acting he like unfollowed that? the Pelicans on Instagram? Then we know <laughs> stuff gets serious. That is that's um, the only player. That's the that's the only time you know. That's, the only, that's the only leverage they have. They feel like is like all right, that's it. I'm unfollowing on multiple. Platforms. You laugh, but that's how the kids like uh, like <laughs> throw shade at each other. They that's the ultimate. That's break-up. how you submit a trade request. So that's how you submit <laughs> yeah, a trade request. No, Just really unfollow is. team. Kyler Murray. Ask Kyler Murray. <laughs> yeah, he submitted it. Uh, we'll see what happens in Arizona. Oh man. All right. Let's talk. <laughs> let's talk games. Tuesday night, yeah. the Cavs uh, plus three fifteen on the money line, heading to Brooklyn. Brooklyn minus three ninety five. Minus eight and a half is the spread. Total sitting at two twenty eight and a half. Moon off. I will give you the honors. What is your? Uh, what's your lean here? Yeah, um, you know, we've we've talked about the Brooklyn Nets all season long. And um, you know, they're one of the worst home teams. In fact, they are the worst home team as far as ATS, uh, as a home team and as a home favorite. I, I'm kind of turning to see and I, I feel like that everybody's gonna look at that stat and be and get behind the Cleveland Cavaliers in this game. And I think this is a point of the season where now it's it's do or die now for the uh, Brooklyn Nets. And was this going to be the game where they step up and play some defense? I'm not sure, but I just feel like the public is going to be all over the Cleveland Cavaliers here, looking public at how, dogs. yeah, and how bad the Brooklyn Nets were at home this season. I'm leaning towards second Brooklyn here. I think that Kyrie and again KD are just going to come out and play ball. Um, you know, when you have those two prolific scorers 
on this team. I, I just feel like it's just going to be too much for the Cavs to keep up with. Um, I don't think Jared Allen is going to be playing in this game from what I've been reading about it so far. Evan Mobley is back for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but for this team to be in this situation with having so many young players, I think the only veteran that's probably been in the playoffs on this team is Kevin Love. Um, they probably have some other guys in there I'm not thinking of right now, but this is a young team. It's the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's for them to be at this stage, taking on a two-headed monster uh, like Kevin Durant and Kyrie. And let's not forget Andre Drummond, Drummond has been pretty good. Seth Curry should be playing. Patty Mills, they have veterans on this team that knows what it takes to win. So I'm going to I'm gonna go with the Nets here. I think I'm going to fade the public here a little bit and take the Nets uh, on the spread here. Yeah. And, and maybe the, you know, some of their home stats, their home ATS record, of course, Kyrie not playing <laughs> a big portion of those home games because of the yeah. vaccine issues. So that certainly would pad the numbers, uh, 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 you know, against them for their home stuff. What about you, Terrell, which way, uh, what do you, what are you doing? First game here, Cavs, nets, eight and a half. All right. Let me tell you why moon wrong here. Oh, because, okay. I like it because look, they have not only are they worst, he downplayed it. He downplayed how bad they are ATS at home. They are not. I only said they're the worst, worst team. ATS home. No, no, no. That's downplaying. They covered nine games over the course of a wow. season. Nine oh home games. God. That's no insane. Freaking way. Just sit off the top of my head. Here are three teams that they just played that gave them the business at home. The Pistons, the Rockets, the Pacers. Now they won those games. But those games were close. They were close for majority of the game. You're telling me, like, we're at the point where this team has Kevin Durant, Kyrie, and a bunch of nobodies. That's at, at this point, that's where they are. Seth Curry is on a on a gimpy leg. And this team is just literally looking for an identity of what they're gonna be without their two stars. And so when I look at this Cavs team who is really good on the road. And they're able to go in here. They just played this team not too long ago. And they did get the cover there where they covered this same exact spread. So the fact that we're coming back and getting the same number after the Nets covered it last time shows me that it was a little bit of a fluke there. And I'm really looking at their opportunity to uh, create turnovers in this game and the chance that they have where they're scoring on the inside with Evan Mobley. He's a matchup nightmare for them. Lori yeah. marketing is a matchup nightmare for them. They have so many mismatches that it's got to be at some point, they're going to take advantage of all of those. So I like the Cavs here. I like them on the eight and a half and I would even sprinkle on the money line because I don't oh. think this Nets team is that good at all. At this wow. point, you're just right in the name of KD and Kyrie. I really don't think this team is that good. Breaking news, Sean. I don't know if you can hit the Ben Simmons has been ruled out after being called a nobody <laughs> by Terrell Furman. Uh, uh I mean, I kind of, I, I like everything that Terrell said. I think that the interesting uh, key aspect of the the nuggets he threw out were all regular season. Yeah. Postseason time, Nets roll. Well, and then, and I guess my question is, what level? If Ben Simmons does, plays, though, I would bet. I would bet on the Cavs money line, one hundred percent. That's how. That's how jinxed he is. No, because there, there are kind of like a couple things to look at here with the idea of, well, you know, they're. Nets, you could imagine, have a flip. They're going to switch. When are they going to flip it? Are they going to flip it in the play-in game, or are they going to? So they better. Uh, like, well, <laughs> they I know. Have to. <laughs> yeah, I guess. It, and seven, eight seed. Is it win and get in, or what's uh, Moonoff? What is the what is the playing rules again? Yeah, so seven and eight are going to play each other. Whoever wins from that game will be the seventh seed, and then the uh, winner. So they'll then they'll play the winner of the ninth and tenth seed. So whoever wins from that ninth and tenth seed. Will play the loser of seven and eight, and whoever wins from that game will be the eight seed. Okay, it's so not back Cleveland against the wall, chance, yeah. but you want to, you don't want to play an extra yeah. game. Okay, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. All right, I'm, I'm, God damn it, Terrell made, uh, he made a bunch of good points for the Cavs, but I'm, I'm gonna go chalky here. But to Munoz's point, I don't know if it will be chalky. I'm gonna take the Nets lane eight and a half. Now, first round favorites of at least four and a half points, or sorry, uh, I misread that. First. Round home favorites or God damn it. These <laughs> the, the, the nugget first round home favorites of at least eight and a half points are 39 and one straight up. So see that wasn't so hard, Ben Simmons. He got to the end. But no. this isn't the first round. Exactly. Well, round. you're right. And then Well, is it? Wait, do we count this as the first uh, well, round? That's, I nope. don't know. Do the nope. trends realize? Because college got went back and forth on this for a couple of years. It was the first round, then it wasn't the first round. <laughs> Play in. They they call this specifically the play in. So I think for trend purposes. Okay. 
Uh, either way, I'm on. Do the we nets. like the first half unders for all playing games? <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. Figure, we're gonna have to crack okay. another cup. L.A. Clippers plus one twenty five on the money line, squaring off against the T Wolves. Another uh, Tuesday night game here. Seven eight. The uh, Clippers are the eight seed, uh, and they're yes, they're heading up to Minnesota. Play the T Wolves. T Wolves, like I said, laying three points. Total two thirty and a half. Man, this Clippers team has been uh, completely reinvigorated now that Paul George is back. Is it enough? To carry them against the T Wolves, Terrell, how say you? So Ty Lu is a was a dark horse candidate for probably majority of the year, and if they had a better record, he probably would have won Coach of the Year because what he did with this team is absolutely amazing. There's no reason they should be anywhere sniffing the play in with yeah. the roster that they have for majority of this season. And so when I look at these guys over the past ten games, when and a lot of this time when Paul George has come back. Their offensive numbers have absolutely skyrocketed from what they're doing. They're fifth in points per game, first in three point percentage, ninth in field goal percentage. And now they're getting a T Wolves team that is literally cannot defend anybody. They they can't defend anybody. And so they give up the 29th most points per game. And they're the only thing they can really do is create havoc and create turnovers. And that's probably the edge that they have. But I'm I'm rolling with Paul George and the Clippers here. I mm. think that they're a little bit more of the veteran team. I like getting points with this team. And the it's gonna be on inside the paint. Will the Clippers be able to do something inside the paint, especially with Zubak, their big center against Carl Anthony Towns, who has been known to let people score on them? Steve a bomber smells blood in the water. He's trying to make LA his. Lakers aren't in the playoffs. Clippers uh small, anything to get it done. Small anything dog there. to get it done. Moon off, where are you at? Are you are you riding with uh Terrell here or are you uh you going against him? Yeah, hundred percent agree with what what Terrell is saying there that defensively this team has been atrocious and that's kind of understating it for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I'm kind of getting vibes of this Minnesota Timberwolves teams of what Memphis was last year that they kind of need to get that playoff experience, play in tournament experience. And I think next year is where Minnesota, I think really is going to take off. But, you know, Terrell said that getting Paul George back off, you one of your best players back in this lineup, the offense is starting to look, you know, what we're kind of expecting here. Um, the depth on this team for the Clippers is absolutely amazing. I mean, you, you talk about the role players on this team. Um, they're doing an absolutely fantastic job. Like Terrell said, Ty Lu should be in that conversation for coach of the year and what he's been able to do with his team. Um, I think that they'll go up there. I think they're going to go ahead and get that victory and they're, they're going to be into the playoffs as, as that seventh seed. Yeah. And they're, they're, I mean, who knows what their, what their ceiling is if they assuming they, Get through this play in first round loss. Yeah, probably. probably. <laughs> they're, so they're the Clippers are actually the team that I would be most afraid for the Memphis Grizzlies. I've been on record saying that I think the Memphis Grizzlies are going to the Western Conference Finals. I think that they have a very good chance of beating even the Phoenix Suns in the Western Conference Finals. The Clippers are the one team that I can sit here and say, wow, I really don't know if, if Memphis can win that series mm. out of everybody else in this field. So that now, I'm, now why I'm do super you, nervous for them. Why why do you think the Clippers match up so well against Memphis? Because they're they're is stout defensively. So they got a bunch of three and D guys. They got a bunch of defensive guys on that staff that can really give it to all of the players. Like it's basically a whole team of role players playing a bunch of role players, to be honest. Like that is what Memphis are. That's what a lot of their benches is a bunch of role players. And so when you have role players playing role players and you got a coach like Ty Lue who can make adjustments, I think he can out coach Taylor Jenkins. And I think that they can neutralize John Morant enough where now you're making everybody else on that team beat you. And you're and since you match up so well, you got somebody for every single body that with the addition of Paul George that kind of sets you over the top. It really does. So I, I'm nervous for Memphis in that aspect, but if Memphis can get past the Clippers potentially, or if they even get lucky and play the Timberwolves, then I think Memphis has a, a pretty good ch- chance on some going the whole way. Yeah. No, uh, 18 to one, the Clippers to win the uh, West. Yeah. I, I <laughs> picked up a low. 50 to one ticket on the Clippers oh, okay. just, just in case Kawhi Leonard does come back. Do we, and do we have any updates on Kawhi? So uh, I want to sh- uh, shout out to uh, Zach ZB, uh, one of our co-hosts of the NBA gambling podcast. And he dropped a tweet a while back um, in the Slack channel. And he said that um, the trainer for Kawhi Leonard, he said, you know, Clip- he's the quote, I don't know exactly what the tweet said, but he said, Clipper nation, I would be excited 
if, if you're a Clippers fan right now, that came from his trainer. So from what I'm reading right now is that he's getting up shots. You know, I would not be surprised if this Clippers team gets into that first round and you see Kawhi Leonard uh-huh. upgraded to questionable on that injury report. Um, they could wreak some havoc in the Western <laughs> conference. Like Terrell said, well, 50 to it's one, the same thing with Paul George, 50 to yeah, one, the same thing they do with Paul George. Yeah. 50 to one. We're definitely talking 18 uh, to one. I'm, uh, I'm you're firing <laughs> right over I'm, there. I'm just looking around, see if I can find a better price. Um, first round home favorites. Now, again, this, this oh, is not technically a first round home favorite, <laughs> Take two. but first round home favorites of less than four and a half points, AKA the T wolves here are 16, 26 and one against the spread in the last five seasons. So NBA, Sean getting into the trends. I I like me a solid trend, Uh, especially. (laughs) (laughs) I like a trend that you can add a, a gut handicap, a story to, right? Because the Clippers are probably not getting enough respect. And, and again, Paul George is the only guy with like massive game experience, like massive playoff experience. It's weird to be in a playoff game where Paul George is the guy that's that has the experience to carry a team here. I think they're going to come in there. And great point about Ty Lue. You know, Ty Lue, this was kind of a breakout year for Ty Lue as far as just respect for him as a coach because, you know, before that, it's just, uh, he's friends with LeBron or yeah. he's friends with some mm-hmm. former players. He coached a couple super teams. I mean, to get this team to your guys' point previously, to get them into the playoffs in this in this spot is is crazy. So yeah, imagine going back in a time machine and trying to tell yourself that Ty, Ty Lue Lue. isn't a bad coach. Yeah, like uh, the the knock on Ty Lue was just like, oh, he's LeBron's puppet. He's just some guy he's friends with. He's gonna you know do whatever LeBron wants. And now we're showing Ty Lue spreading his wings. Doing just a great wanna, job. I mean, we got Terrell complimenting I, his in-game adjustments. I want to see a Ty Lu puppet. <laughs> that would be. He is definitely way smaller, so you could fit. He could fit into get some it, players' get, laps. Probably. Get his, uh, get, <laughs> shove your hand up his ass, and uh, right. if you like, if you like Minnesota, if you like Minnesota, I would play them in the first quarter. So Minnesota has mm. been one of the best first quarter teams over the course of the entire season. And uh, in the fir- last 10 games, they're six and four in the first quarter, last 10 games for the Clippers, three, six, and one. So Clippers typically do start games off slow, especially on the road. And then that's when Ty Lue makes his adjustments and they come back and get the win. So if you can get a, a line on the Timberwolves in the first quarter and then bounce it back with a live play on the Clippers, you should be in good Ooh, shape. I like it. I like the live that's play. That's an investment strategy right there. I, and I think Clippers a plus three live dog. So I'm all over the Clippers. Kramer, I'm assuming you're riding the clip oh, train. I'm I'm I stand with Steve Bomber most of the time. Yeah. Well, you have to, or, you, or if you don't stand with him, he's gonna run around yeah, till you get up and get excited. That video of him uh, when they introduced Microsoft Windows. Have you guys seen that? Where he's yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, it's an all-time uh, Steve Ballmer video. <laughs> Not that it's there's like pro- he does that he does that every single home game every oh, single game he's a maniac. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're a billionaire and you just owned a pro- professional sports team, probably have a lot of energy to be a maniac. Brian, I've had a lot of energy. You know why? Because I've been on Athletic Greens, taking oh. it literally every day. Wake up in the morning, get my eight ounce glass of water, fire in the uh, Athletic Green supplement, shake it up. The AG one, delicious goes down super smooth. You know, most people, they don't do healthy stuff a because it's either a pain in the ass or it doesn't taste good. One AG one, super simple. You just shake it up. They give you a bottle and everything, eight ounces of water. You're good to go. And two, it tastes good. Like I, I, I said this to Ryan off air. I go, have you tried this stuff? It's actually really tasty. Uh, You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens, I, I, again, I don't know what some of that means, but I do know I feel better when I take it. Stomach feels better. Less than $3 a day, 75 or 7,000 five star reviews. Kramer, you've been enjoying your athletic greens. Oh, I mean, you mentioned uh, the eight ounces. Sometimes I'll cheat and go a little, uh, I'll make it a little strong. I'll go stiff on the AG. Oh, one. okay. It goes like seven ounces of water, you know? Again. Get that green flavor. Oh, it's. I, uh, you, you, it goes like, down smooth. Unsolicited. It uh, Like, it's hard to not sound like I'm backhanding them, but it doesn't taste bad. No, you. you Shockingly good taste. Yeah, you think vitamins, uh, nutrition, supplements, it's not going to taste good, but it's it tastes good. It's got like a tropical hint to it. No, I got, I mean, one of the kids even drank a little. Yeah. 
I then when I told I, her what was in it, and she's like, well, maybe when not. I open up the container, the dog runs over. So <laughs> if it, oh. <laughs> it must it must smell pretty good. Athletic Greens, they're uh, gonna give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash SGP. That is athleticgreens.com slash SGP to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutrition insurance. Let it grains. All right. Moving over to the Wednesday games. We got the Hornets. I don't know why I pronounced it like that. Hornets, Atlanta <laughs> Hawks, Atlanta Hawks, minus one ninety on the money line. Hornets, a plus one sixty dog Hawks right at that uh, trend line that I was bringing up minus four and a half total sitting at two thirty seven. kind of a, a, a disappointing year for the Atlanta Hawks. Would you say so moon off? Yeah, they definitely went under their win total for this season. Um, you know, I think we all picked them to get over just because of the performance they had last yeah. season, making it all the way to the Eastern conference finals. Um, you know, now they're, they're going to take on the Hornets in this play in tournament game. And the, the one thing that I'm kind of hesitant about, or what I'm kind of thinking of is that last season, the Charlotte Hornets were in the play in tournament. They got absolutely embarrassed by the Indiana Pacers. They lost that game 144, 117. Is that something that's going to be on their back of their mind? And is that something that they want to avenge against this Atlanta Hawks team? And one thing that does make me nervous about the Atlanta Hawks is that they're not going to have John Collins um, in this game. You know, he's been out for most of the season for the Atlanta Hawks. And look, the Hornets, I was down on them to begin the year, but I think they've kind of proven me wrong. Um, you know, they got into the playing tournament. I, they have some players on this team. Are they going to be able to contain Trey Young? And I don't think that they can, but I think they are going to be able to stay in this game with Terry Rozier. I think on the back of him, I'm looking at him as far as player props for this game. As far as the game goes, I'm going to go with the Hornets here, at least on the spread. I do think that Atlanta probably pulls out the victory late, but I do like the uh, Charlotte Hornets against the spread in this game. So you think Hawks get the W not necessarily the cover. Yeah. Uh, Terrell, what about you? You lead in the same way or are you, you riding with the Hawks? I don't know, man. It's hard to go against villain Trey. It's hard to go against villain Trey, especially when his back is against the wall. And this game is a little bit different than the seven, eight C game. The loser of this game is done. You're you don't even get a chance to fight for another game. And so I think this means a little bit more to this Hawks team and Trey. We've seen them do it before. We've seen them do it the course of a whole playoff. Yeah. They made the Eastern Conference Finals last year. So they've been playing with their backs against the wall for a while. I think that the difference here is going to be Clint Capella and what Clint Capella can do on the inside against the lack of interior for the, the best way I can put it for the Charlotte Hornets. They have literally nobody defending the interior. And Trey should find different ways to get Clint Capella the ball, some easy baskets and some rebounds underneath. So mm, this is a tough one. Charlotte is Charlotte's a good team, but they're a little bit streakier than the Hawks for me. I really, really like the Hawks and how they play it at home. And so I'm going to ride with the Hawks in this one. I'll lay the points with them. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going with you uh, Terrell here. I, I think the Hawks were victims of smelling themselves in the regular season. Hey, we got to the Eastern conference finals. We had such a good run. Uh, you know, uh, Oh, it's this year's going to be a layup. We're taking all this momentum. And I, I kind of fell for it too. I thought they had really, you know, moved on to another level as a team struggled a bunch in the regular season. Obviously Trey young can still totally fill it up. But I, I think at home here against the Hornets with their backs against the wall, I think they're going to be a tough out. Trey young leads the league and total points and assists. Uh, Hornets. I mean, they split two, two, but it, I just feel like at home back against the wall, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Atlanta here. Kramer. I mean, Atlanta and that feared home crowd down there. Uh, they're going to be bashing down the doors, trying to get. No, I like Moonoff's angle. Okay, I, I'm a, if I'm if I'm a judge here, Moonoff had me at hello. I'm taking the Hornets <laughs> plus the five and a half. I'm taking the Hornets on the money line. Really? Yeah. I I, I don't know. I mean, again, TMZ take here, but. I think the NBA and the world needs more of uh, Lamelo Ball, not Trey Young. 
Oh yeah. We, we, we have to see more of those AT and T commercials of him <laughs> working. And then his dad walking by in the background. <laughs> That's my boy. You can't be in on the joke. That's what's annoying about the ball family. You can't be this annoying guy who crowbars his way everywhere and then get endorsement deals. where you are an annoying guy. <laughs> you want to play yourself as an annoying guy in this ad? Hell yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's easy to make fun of, but he uh. did get so you, know, you got to appreciate two of his that. sons in the NBA. Yeah. And Never say no. <laughs> yeah. Guy that guy and drafted in the top three picks. Both. I, know. I, I know. So it's like, he's easy to make fun of, but can you argue with the results? Like you said, two, two of his sons are top Bulls. three picks. Will yeah. Smith available Bull, to play him in the, right now. Yeah. Will Smith available the, to play him in the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last uh, playing game Wednesday night. Another, uh, Nine ten spot here. Loser goes home. Winner plays the loser, the seven eight seed in the West. Spurs plus one eighty on the money line. Pelicans minus two twenty. Spread is uh, minus five two twenty nine and a half. To me, this spread is is not big enough. I mean, I I think this Pelicans team has kind of figured it out as of late. The second half resurgence with CJ McCollum. Um, yeah, and I I just like the way they're playing overall. That's your guy, Sean. No, I I love me some CJ McCollum, mm. and I think it's it's kind of crazy that they're. I mean, how many games have the Spurs won? It's kind of crazy they're even playing each other in this elimination style game. Um, I yeah, Terrell, where are you at with this one? I'm all over the Pelicans though. I I think they're they're a fun team. It is a simple handicap with the Pelicans. It's very similar to the Bulls on a lesser scale. You fade the Pelicans against good teams and you back them like hell against bad teams. And at the end of the day, this Spurs team is still a 10 seed. They are still a 10 seed. They are not a good basketball team. They're a melatonin basketball team that can put you to sleep most days. <laughs> and so I like that. this is this is the chance for the Pelicans to go out there and do what they do best and put on a show. You have Brandon Ingram, you have CJ McCollum, yeah. you have Jonas Valanciunas, who's gonna be a matchup nightmare for them down low. And be and he's had five straight double doubles against this team, putting up big numbers for him. This is going to be a train wreck. I can honestly see the Pelicans coming out here and blowing the Spurs Ooh. out of the water and moving on with ease to the next round. Like you said, this spread isn't big enough. I like the Pelicans minus five. Yeah, and uh, the, I was trying to pull up the Nuggets. CJ McCollum, twenty nine points per game in the three games. Versus the Spurs, so he certainly has their number. Munaf, are we overlooking a, a pro Spurs angle here? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> yeah, I 100 agree with you guys. I think the one uh, move in the starting rotation or starting lineup that uh, their coach made was putting Jackson Hayes into that starting lineup, which I love that move. It gives them more defensive guys, uh, more rim protection. Uh, when you have Valanciunas, who's not great defensively, uh, Jackson is that guy that can be your rim protector. And, you know, we talked about CJ McCollum. He's come over, he's playing with a chip on his shoulder for the new Orleans Pelicans. And, you know, we haven't talked about Brandon Ingram. I mean, this guy's one of the better scorers in the league. When we have those two guys and then, uh, you know, Valanciunas who's going to eat Jackson Hayes playing defense. Also Herb Jones in that starting lineup. who can also play defense for this team. I kind of like that. They are more um, well-rounded or they're, they're better at all three levels. Uh, then the Spurs. And again, Spurs remember that, you know, maybe not in the playing tournament, but at least in the playoffs where the game kind of slows down. I, I think that's my catch up to them in this game because the Spurs were one of the teams that played at a very high pace throughout the season. And let's just say the Pelicans do slow this down and turn this into a half court game. I don't think the Spurs are going to have success in the half, half court. I like the Pelicans here with CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram. I 100% agree with you guys. They should. Be advancing um, to play the the loser of that seven eight seed. What's the exercise like? How many guys do you trust in the last two minutes of the game on the on the Spurs, and how many do you trust on the Pelicans? I mean, is doesn't that clearly give you the choice in this game? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I guess I guess you have Greg Popovich, but <laughs> other than that, <laughs> yeah, he ain't, he's lost the step. <laughs> he really yeah, has. He's not as good off the bounce too much, anymore. Too much red wine. So Kramer. <laughs> Clean sweep on the uh, Pelicans. Oh man, I I bet you him and Belichick could could get down. Yeah, <laughs> give me the Pelicans. All right, uh, we'll move over. Talk a little uh, other series, series totals, that kind mm. of stuff. Who we like, but we mentioned CJ McCollum, and that uh, brings up this weekend or this week's edition of Real Men of Degens, brought to you by PropSwap.com. 
promo code <laughs> SGP for that instant deposit match up to $500. SGPN presents Real Men of DGENS. Real Men of DGENS. We salute you. CJ McCullum. That's right. A couple days ago, uh, someone tweeted out, Why aren't you on the injury report to CJ McCullum? CJ McCullum quote tweets that response and writes, I will be playing a few minutes tonight before heading to the bench to watch the young guys hoop. Don't take me in your parlays tonight. God bless this man. The free yes, the giving gold. out free unders on his player props. You got to respect, you got to support CJ McCollum this week's real men of DGENS. I mean, he's got to be careful. Well, he's fortunate he's not a wide receiver for the Falcons. <laughs> yeah. He might be done for a year. He does. I think he's <laughs> tweeted out. Uh, Different stuff he's bet on, and uh, you know, obviously not betting on his sport. People have spoken about this before, right? The idea of having the fantasy uh, or the betting uh, insider or betting beat reporter who is just reporting on things like that. Player X is expected to play two minutes. Yeah. No, so that happened multiple times yesterday. Uh, Drew Holiday. Drew, Drew Holiday literally came in just to get a bonus, took a foul, and then went to the bench. Ah. You know, that's free unders. And oh yeah. The fact Lock that players up. are now cognizant that we're betting on what they do in the game and that they're able Kevin Durant just said, Oh, now I know how to piss y'all off. So now, <laughs> you know, when Kevin Durant is in a shitty mood, just take his unders on the game because he's doing it on purpose. Uh, yeah. Is, dude. This is a great, this is what America is. I we need a full it. investigation. The integrity of the game is at stake well, here. Well, Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> NBA players, I mean, we saw with Russell Westbrook when he was padding his numbers for the triple doubles. Like if there was any ever like shenanigans, it'd be very easy not to get a rebound not to get an assist, not to get a free throw and you know have some crazy same game parlay. So maybe we got to check out easy money snipers DMs. I feel like we're going to start <laughs> getting the clever players. We're going to start dropping hints via like yeah. Easter egg. Oh, maybe they'll start selling NFTs. Uh, they'll they'll start uh be- becoming full touts. <laughs> Subscribe to my picks selling page picks. to get <laughs> access <laughs> to get access to all my health reports, yeah. breaking news. <laughs> we gotta get that would actually be a fun, really funny. NBA touts uh, would be like the next level. a month. Yeah. yeah, is it illegal to publish so, an editorial so, post on what you plan on uh, doing that night? Support Ben Simmons Patreon. Um, he's gonna be out for a long time. He's sad. So. Uh, all right, uh, let's let's go over to the Western Conference. Talk about some series uh, that we have info on that we can talk about. Uh, Utah Jazz Mavericks. The line is not out yet. Of course, great reason to subscribe to the uh, NBA Gambling Podcast because I'm sure as soon as that drops, you guys will be covering it. But uh, Jazz Mavericks, no line yet because Luca strained his calf. Moon off. Uh, what's the latest on that situation? Yeah, he's supposed to get an uh, MRI done today to find out how severe the injury is. Uh, everybody's just kind of waiting for that news to kind of come out. Um, typically, uh, from what I read, that the median for guys being out with the calf strain has been 16 days, and the least amount has been three days. So we just gotta wait and see and see, um, you know, how bad it is for Luca. I got to imagine, as a uh, you know. Again, youth soccer coach, aka youth <laughs> soccer trainer. Calf injuries are tough, especially for a sport like basketball. Uh, hard to imagine he's going to be. It feels like you can play through him, but you'd you'd be severely limited. He could, I guess, he could he could still. So you just wouldn't be explosive. Yeah, no, I I think that's going to be huge. I mean, Terrell, assuming he comes back in maybe that three to five day range. What's your? Do you have a handle on the on the conference yet, or or uh, sorry, the series, or you just gotta you gotta wait and see the injury stuff first? This is all Dallas series. This is <laughs> this is purely Dallas <laughs> series. If you so, if anybody has not been tuned for the duration of the season, as you can know, I have told you for the whole season that this yes. Utah team was overrated as hell, <laughs> literally overrated. You, you throw a double digit spread at them and they just say, fuck it. We're not going to play basketball today and lose. <laughs> so there's, we're at the point where we're in the playoffs and this is the ultimate choke job. It never gets any better than this. And I actually didn't even get to talk about this on our pod, 
But the best thing that would happen here and would be the most Utah thing is, is for them to be up 3-1 and blow it again. It's to blow another 3-1 lead against this team. Luka just comes back and just <laughs> carries this team to the mountaintop because the Jazz have blown double-digit leads in the fourth quarter literally for months. Four months they have blown double-digit leads in the fourth quarter. They played the Warriors and seven minutes left in the game. In seven minutes, they scored four points. It, four, it's, it's seven points. It, it's seven weird. Minutes. Like this, this Utah profile of this Utah team has always been sneaky, good, sneaky, scrappy, tough place to play. And now it's kind of completely reversed where they're to, to your point where they're getting leads and, and fumbling them away. I, in a weird way, you could maybe make a case if you're, if you're that anti Utah, this Luca injury is the best thing that happens because when he does get cleared or when they do drop the line, the price you're going to be getting on Dallas is going to be yeah. inflated because of the injury, right? I can't bet on a Utah Jazz team when the spread is bigger than the amount of passes that Donovan Mitchell has made to Rudy Gobert. <laughs> I, I I can't do it. It's a very specific <laughs> no uh, trend there. Munaf, are you gonna are you blindly fading the Jazz like your buddy uh, Terrell here? Yeah, I can't fade, fade Terrell, man. He's been on he's <laughs> been on top of this uh, Utah Jazz team all season long. Uh, anytime we get to the Jazz teams, I'm just listening to what Terrell has to say. And uh, this is another spot where 100% I agree with him. Um, you know, they it's crazy that they do have a game one line out right now where the Jazz are favored by two and a half points. And obviously, if Luka does come back, that'll probably turn the other way to um, the Dallas Mavericks being favored. But, you know, as far as the series goes, there, there's this, this team, there's something wrong with this team. I think where is it's friction between Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell. Um, I think this is, and I've said this multiple times on the NBA gambling podcast. I think this is the last time you'll see Donovan Mitchell in a Utah jazz uniform. And I've said that, you know, this is probably going to be a first round exit. It probably will be uh, Dallas, you know, with Luca, I think the hiring of Jason Kidd, they've significantly improved their defense. Um, and they have the three point shooters around Luca that ready to uh, knock him down once he passes them the ball. So uh, I think that this is going to be the year where Luca finally gets out of the first round. Uh, if he does play, um, I'm just not a believer in this jazz team. They've never gotten it done in the playoffs for me. And I think, again, I think this team is going to be blown up by next season. Jason Kidd, great point. Jason Kidd definitely <clears throat> fits that Ty Lu category where coming into this year, I didn't think uh, much of him as a coach. But yeah, I mean, they've been playing well. And I like the I like the fade Utah angle, especially when you have a big star like Donovan Mitchell. To Mudoff's point, with one foot out the door, feels like good time to uh, hop on hop on the Mavs there and and whatever you can get the price at. I mean, I guess the counter argument would be if they if they steal a game or two at, in Dallas and then yeah, their home then they're court, in trouble. You know, you like to talk about the elevation out there in it's Utah, tricky. but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll ride with uh, Dallas in basketball. Yes, clear clearly not <laughs> supporting the city of Dallas, just their uh, basketball team in this particular spot. Next up in the West, Nuggets plus one seventy five dogs against the Golden State Warriors. A nice little uh, three six matchup here. Of course, Denver Nuggets uh, supposedly have the uh, MVP on their team. Warriors started out real hot. Steph got banged up, uh, not as you know strong second half of the season. Uh, they were they were on pace to really dominate early on, kind of falling mm -hmm. apart, injuries, et cetera. Moon off, what's your take on this series? Nuggets, Warriors. Yeah, the biggest question for me is for the Denver Nuggets outside of Jokic, who is going to step up because it seems like they're not going to have their next two best players in this series, which is Mike, uh, Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray. Uh, they lost him last year to a torn ACL right around, I think right around this time during playoffs. Um, Golden State, from what I'm reading, Steve Kerr said that he may or may not be ready for game one, which I Pretty much means that he will probably be out there for game one. Um, this team is finally healthy. Is the Golden State Warriors right? They got Clay back. He's played about thirty-one games, so he's. I think he has his legs back under him. Draymond Green came back about a couple weeks ago, and he's really the catalyst for this Golden State Warriors offense. And, and you kind of look at the support, supporting cast around the Golden State Warriors. There are some questionable marks, but Jordan Poole has been playing absolutely out of his mind. He's going to be pivotal uh, off the bench for the Golden State Warriors. Um, in, in preseason, I did give out the Warriors to win the title. Mm -hmm. um, not sure if they're going to be able to do that, but you know, when you have the Splash Brothers and you have Draymond Green out there, I think you always have a chance to win this series. Uh, I think Golden State's going to take care of business and advance to the next round. It's a lock. Yeah, I it's mean, a lock. I'm rocking the wa Wazoo baby, Clay Thompson. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> this this is a this is a lock. Well, the Nuggets and minus again, two ten. Give it all to me. 
the the case for why Jokic is getting the MVP allegedly is that uh, allegedly is that he has such bad players around him. You know, he, they've been missing a couple of their blue chip guys mm-hmm. and Murray, et cetera. Their bench is very thin. Again, that's probably why some of his advanced metric numbers look way better than other guys with okay benches. Uh, that aside, Terrell, is there any case for the Nuggets winning this series besides just Jokic carrying them and and some crazy performance? Yeah, I mean, Jokic is a matchup nightmare for the Warriors. And if this if there was a team that would scare them, it probably is the Nuggets because while all those bench guys are essentially nobodies for majority of the time, there are times that those guys get hot and they can keep up that duration for one series and we've seen them be able to do it before a la Portland last year then they're going to be really, really good. And so without Robin Murray, without Alfred Porter Jr., then Batman has really been showing his weakness here. And so (laughs) it's up to Bones Highland, VCU, as you know, and it's up to guys like um, Morris. It's up to guys like Will Barton to be able to hit their shots when Jokic gets them the ball. That's going to be the biggest thing. There's going to be some games that hit their shots. Are they going to hit their shots four games against this Warriors team? That's the struggle. I don't think many people would have given Alfred the third third strongest title for Batman after Robin. Uh, so oh, I did enjoy. Scott, once once me and Scott dropped it, it stuck. Oh it yeah, stuck and the great fans said it had to stay. So it's Alfred. He's Alfred. I, I like that. I like that. No uh, bad so, back. That's why. So it's see, Terrell. It seems like you're on Golden State minus two ten there for this series, right? Yes, I am. I think that they get it done in six. So okay. I originally. It, it seemed like it could be, you know, early for Golden State, but I do think that Jokic poses a nightmare. I do think that this team can actually get going offensively. They've been one of the better offensive teams for the majority of the season. Denver has been, and so I think that they can get it done a couple of games. But I don't think that they do four games of getting the supporting cast to show up because they've just been disappearing. Yeah, they they'll win at least much. a game. I, I like the idea of spreading, uh, maybe spreading a unit across Warriors to win at five or six. That's what I was thinking. It's an so, aggregate two yeah. to one. Terrell said Warriors in yeah. six. That's that's four to one. But I I kind of like Cosine and Ryan's little strategy here of Golden State in five and Golden State in six. They're both four to one. Yeah. Uh, you hit one of those, you know, then you're, you're then good. you're up plus two hundred. It's a minus two ten series, so it gives you some. It's I mean, a little more fun way to play it. I mean, who minus two ten mm, series positive EV? Any other <sighs> any other uh, angles on this moon off? Uh, do you like uh, any of these series prices? Uh, no, I think I agree with you guys. It's either going to be Warriors in uh, in five or six. I think at that, those numbers being at four to one, I think that's a pretty good chance. I think landing on that. Um, I, I, I took. I'm saying I think it's going to be Warriors in five. Yeah, that also pays four to one, and again. Yeah. If they're up three zero, you know you have a hedge opportunity there because uh, it would be a pretty big money line on them if you're worried about um, you know Warriors sweeping. Or I'm filling out my bracket as we go here, so I make sure I get the games oh, yeah. right. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com/slash/nba playoffs. Get that in over there. All right, we're gonna head over to the East. Uh, before we get into that, of course, getting the shout out trade coffee. Oh man, again, key part of my day. Firing up some awesome, uh, awesome cup of coffee. Just cleaned out my coffee pot. But things just been putting in work. Um, trade coffee, some of the freshest, best tasting coffee they've ever made, and uh, you know they're sending it out to you. Basically, they connect with some of the country's best craft roasters. Get you some amazing beans. I'm a whole bean guy. I like uh, grinding the beans. Got, got, you gotta get a coffee pot that'll auto grind the beans, set the alarm, wake up. It it makes all the difference. Get a nice pour over going. If you grind your own beans and and get like a handmade pour over at home, that is some that is just some damn good coffee. Um, and again, they're hooking you up. They're giving you some of the the best, freshest roasted beans. And again, if you're a coffee snob or you just you know you're just like a regular Joe who needs a cup of Joe. Uh, trades real coffee experts personally taste test over 500 or 450 roasts so they know exactly what to recommend to you. Take a little coffee quiz, get your coffee taste dialed in. It's fun, it's easy. And again, you don't have to believe me. They've delivered over 5 million bags of fresh coffee with more than 750,000 positive reviews. Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order. Plus free shipping. All you got to do is go to drinktrade.com 
slash SGP. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash SGP and let trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash SGP. Moving over to the East, starting things off with the Chicago Bulls versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Right now, WinBet has a serious price, a uh, plus 650 for the Bulls, minus 1000 already for the Bucks. We do have a series spread uh, price you can find out there, Bulls plus 2 and a half. Um that's plus 150, Bucks minus 2 and a half is minus 195 the other way. Uh man, the the Bulls were kind of like a fun story to start the season. Looked really good, very surprising. They were top of the East, and then uh-huh. it's just completely fallen apart in the second half of the season. Terrell, where are you at with the Bulls? And it seemed, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like the Bucks were almost, you know, finagling their schedule at the end of the year there to make sure they ended up playing <laughs> the Bulls, right? Yeah, I mean, I would want to play the Bulls too if you look at this team. We were talking about LeVar Ball earlier and him calling his shot with his kids. Lonzo is Lonzo is the catalyst. Lonzo is the catalyst of when this team, when Lonzo went down, this is when this team took a turn. Yeah. They went down in defensive rating and that really, really hurt them. They can't stop anything. And so this team has, I told you that on a lesser scale, the Pelicans were the Bulls. This is the epitome of you just fade them against good teams. They literally cannot beat good teams. They struggle with it. They have not done it in what seems like weeks, maybe months. And so here's a spot where I think Milwaukee may drop a couple to them just because Milwaukee has is unable to guard the three point line at all mm. whatsoever. And if the bulls decide to move out of what they've been doing, they have been stayed away from the three point line for all this season. If they switch that up for the this playoff series, then they're going to really have a chance here because that's where you can attack Milwaukee beyond the perimeter. And they have the shooters, Kobe white and in IO and in Patrick Williams and in Zach Levine that can get the, get it done on that outside. So I, I like Milwaukee here for obvious reasons, but can the Bulls cover that two and a half? I, I think so. Okay, so you're you like obviously Bucks to move on with the series, but you think there's some value in Bulls? I fear the deer. It doesn't sound like he's fearing the deer. All uh, that Bulls plus two and a half on the game. So that's it. That's that's that's. You must have never play. driven in the dark roads of New Jersey or Pennsylvania because <laughs> oh, a yeah. deer will fuck your car up. Yes, it hey, is. Hey, hey, they're out there in South Carolina too, and they definitely will. I've almost hit one. Yeah, before, so fear it, Terrell. Come on. <laughs> he's not nah, fearing the not, deer. He likes he likes the they bulls. Weren't bu- those was little. It, those were were real real bucks. These might be some does this year. Ooh. We'll see. Oh, I like it. Oh. Tossing out some does. Fire. What about you, Moon off? You got the Bucks, big number. How many? It, to me, it just seems like a Bulls not going to win uh, the series. Are they going to win zero, one, or two? Seems to be the uh, discussion here, right? Munaf uh, muted himself. There we go. All right, sorry about that. Um, I, I think it's going to be Bucks in five here. You know, Terrell okay. talked about the three point shooting for uh, the. Chicago Bulls, but they weren't very consistent all season long. And if you kind of take a look at how many they made per game, they were all the way down at number 29. And that's kind of been the same story for them over the last 10 games as well. They haven't been a great three point shooting team. Can they turn it on? Sure. But, you know, I I just don't think they have enough shooters to, you know, knock them down. And again, Terrell made the point that when this team plays uh, better competition, they haven't been very good. And on top of that, out of the last 17 games, these two teams have gone head to head. Milwaukee has won 16 of those 17 games. So I'm going bucks here in five. I think they're going to go and take care of business here. Uh, you know, defending champs. Um, and again, the injuries that, that they don't have, they didn't have AC for majority of the season. They didn't have Lonzo for majority of the season. That's two of their best defenders. And obviously when you don't have Lonzo in the series, I think that's going to take a toll on defensive side. Uh, also on the offensive side because he is their point guard. So I, I just think the Bucks are going to take care of business here. Uh, give me the Bucks in five. Bucks in five. So you can either play Bucks five exact result at plus two twenty five, mm. or Bucks minus two and a half. Uh, that's all the way up already to minus one ninety five. Kramer, yeah. what are you what are you doing? 
That, that minus two and a half bet is is it, this is stay away from me. I feel like that bet is well, is one a bet. I've that only, line moved yeah. when we were recording this morning for the NBA gambling podcast when we we're discussing it. That was at minus one twenty. Now I'm yeah. talking about to minus one ninety five. Also on that series price, it was minus seven hundred. Now it's all the way up to minus one thousand. So that's kind of telling you where I guess maybe sharp money is coming on that. I don't know. I'm I'm it's the public. Yeah, and I'm a little scared of if I was gonna take Bucks minus two and a half to lay that price of minus one ninety five is crazy. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with Terrell here and just take a shot on the uh, on the Bulls plus two and a half. I think this this there is a complacency around this Bucks team a little bit, and especially I could see you know, they were kind of resting guys going you know towards the end of the regular season. They're you know returning champs, so I could see them struggling maybe to get up or be interested for some of these early round one games. Maybe playing with their food a little bit. Uh, Chicago throwing the kitchen sink at them with nothing to lose. I wouldn't be shocked if they get two wins. <laughs> So I'll go. Uh, so if you if you think that I mean if you're taking the plus two and a half, yeah, which I, I don't mind that angle. Do you also do you sprinkle anything on them to win? The Bulls, yeah. Uh, That's that feels like yeah. throwing money away. Yeah, yeah. you're probably. So, I heard some grunts. <laughs> no, I think I think you're better off at that point. I think you're better off just sprinkling on Milwaukee in six, <laughs> maybe Milwaukee in seven, but. The Bulls to win the series is yeah. a little hard press. They're not going to. They're not going to first round. Yeah, they're going to have to win. You know what? Two games at least in Milwaukee. That's not going to yeah. happen. So, uh, like, yeah, I think the plus two and, and a Milwaukee half. Milwaukee is a really good road team. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, why aren't we talking about Bucks sweep? Two eighty five. Talk me into me. it. No, nah, but they they understand it. what it takes. To, to your point, right? Returning champs. Hey, let's not play any extra games in the first. It's round. no let's way they make zero adjustments. It's no way they make. They lost this team all during the regular season. You can't make zero adjustments and get and get swept. Playoffs that are if, different. If, you, if that I, happens, I, know I very, want Billy Donovan's head. <laughs> I know very little about the NBA in the grand scheme of the pantheon that is my head and brain. But what I do know is that the postseason is different than the regular <laughs> season. Give me the the Bucks to sweep. I fear the deer. Breaking news: Postseason different than regular <laughs> season. That's my big <laughs> handicap. All right, we're going to move over to the Raptors Sixers, of course. StableDuel.com, DFS horse racing simplified, easy to play. They got free games, they got paid games, and win as much as forty thousand dollars. If you love action, and I know you do, that's why you're listening to the Sports Gambling Podcast. You're going to love StableDuel. Head over to StableDuel.com, get started today. And again, we have a, a plenty of picks, strategy, horse racing, uh, DFS covered on the website or Slack channel. If you want to meet up with some fellow guys who like to play the ponies, the Slack channel is very fun. Talk some stable duel strategy in there as well. Head over to stableduel.com, see how many winners you can pick in your stable. I'll see you in the winner's circle. Play, race, win. Philadelphia 76ers, minus 210 on the series price. Raptors, Plus one seventy, Moon off. I will let you uh, start this off. I'm, I know I saw someone in the YouTube chat already uh, throwing it out there. Lane Elliott saying, um, "You know, I'm I'm going to say it." Oh, wait, say who it. who is? Uh, oh no, sorry, Kyle. Oh, Kyle, a uh, big fan of the show. Sorry, Sean. Raptors plus one fifty, wow. easy money. Let's go Raptors. He is wow. a Canadian, so he could be blinded <laughs> off his uh, love of uh, you know all things Canada. I mean, off. Sean. Sean is wearing a. If you're not watching YouTube.com/slash Sports Gambling Podcast, Sean is rocking a Sixers jersey with a T-shirt underneath. A Sixers T-shirt. <laughs> So <laughs> I wore the Sixers T-shirt to work because we're talking in say, I'm NBA. Not Sean is back, and then obviously it's game time. Got to suit up and put the Embiid jersey on, uh, no. not the one that I have on. Pause the That's show though. Can... Typically, if you were confident, you would have been doing some curls, maybe a couple push-ups. You would have shed the undershirt because you would want these. It's a little chilly in the studio, studio lights to re be reflecting off those guns <laughs> live. I do YouTube. have some. I do have some guns going. Okay, sorry. Moon off. Talk, talk to me about this Raptor Sixers series. Sixers cruise, right? No way they blow this. Yeah, I think you're only going to be wearing that Joel Embiid jersey for about two more weeks there, uh, Sean. <laughs> Sorry to say. Um, <laughs> there, there, I, this is going to probably turn into a two hour conversation we could have, but 
the Toronto Raptors, I think to start the season, they were dealing with a lot of injuries, right? Pascal Siakam wasn't there for, um, tea, yeah. uh, for the Raptors. He was, I think he had an elbow injury. They had guys in and out of the lineup with injuries and uh, dealing with the whole, you know, safety protocols, guys having COVID and things like that. They've they, since the post all-star break, they, they really turned it around, uh, have the Toronto Raptors and they're, they're healthy. They have guys that can give this Philadelphia 76ers teams fits. Um, Fred Van Vliet and, and Terrell highlighted this on the uh, podcast this morning that he only played in one of the four games so far this season against the Philadelphia 76ers. And in that lone game, he had 32 points. Now you're going to get Fred Van Vliet, you know, in this series playing, you know, heavy minutes. And we've talked about this all season long that Nick nurse puts his starters out there for 40 plus minutes a night and kind of look at the Sixers. They're not going to have Matisse Thibault playing in Canada because they do have the vaccine mandate uh, that if you do want to play, you have to be uh, vaccinated and he has chosen not to be vaccinated. So they're not going to have him for games three and four. He's probably their, their best defender. Um, the question really becomes then which James Harden are you going to get in this playoff series? Because <laughs> This season, he's he's been hurt, and you can kind of tell that he, he's injured, and whether it's a hamstring or whatever the case might be. But also, as a Rockets fan, I've seen it that he's gotten off to good starts in the playoffs, but as it kind of progresses, he doesn't have the stamina. He's not in shape, so that might catch up to him. And then you're really relying on Tobias Harris and Joel Embiid at that point. Are you going to get the defensive commitment from Joel Embiid on the defensive end? I'm not sure. I think that this Toronto Raptors team is going to give this uh, Philadelphia 76ers team a challenge. And I won't be surprised that I'm picking them to win this series. I'm sorry, Sean, but I got Raptors uh, taking care of business here against the Philadelphia 76ers. Breaking news. Munaf has uh, been released from the sports gambling podcast <laughs> network. Toronto. <Wow. laughs> No, I, I don't mean, think anybody. I don't think anybody caught Mudol's subtle <laughs> jab, but he said that Matisse Thybul wouldn't be available for games four and five. Saying meaning he did not even think this <laughs> would make four, a game myself. six. <laughs> no, not three and four. He didn't even think that it would make a game six. He said that the that the seventy sixes are going to be out of here before game six. So just so wow. everybody realized that mm-hmm. he didn't even mention Disrespect. game six. So he said that they're just going to be gone. Munoff is really a part of two of my favorite SGPN rivalries. Moon off and uh, MMA uh, gambling podcast host Jeff. Yes, and also Moon off and NBA Sean. I, yes, I like we it. we do battle. I like it. Now, no, I, it's, I enjoy. It's more, it's more James Harden hate. Sorry, Sean. I just like. I, oh, I know. I know what's. I know what's tracking there. I'm just posted up in my locker, just standing in the hallways of SGPN <laughs> High, watching Moon off <laughs> shove you into a locker. I'm enjoying it. Uh, Terrell, you seem like a reasonable man. <laughs> What do you, what do you talk me into how the Sixers are going to win this series? All right, Sean, what do you think is more plausible that James Harden goes out here, balls out and wins the series, puts them on a deep playoff run and doc keeps his job or James Harden just completely tanked this series and they just lose and get doc fired. So he can get Mike Dantoni. What what is more Uh, plausible here? Ding, 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 ding. There's a middle ground. I think doc can get fired even if they win this series. No. <laughs> so if they if they lose in round two, I think Doc is completely gone. It's so easy to fire him if they. No, I think they'll have a tougher oh, matchup easier. in the second round. It's easier to fire him if they lose in round one. I 100 percent agree, but um, that's why they're not going to lose. And so uh, Terrell, you really like taking the Toronto Raptors <laughs> plus 170 <laughs> against a guy who should have been the real MVP, Joel Embiid. James Harden, he's going to flip that switch. There's no good strip clubs in Toronto. He's going to be good to go. Um, have you been to Toronto? They got something. No. <laughs> and, now I'm, and now I'm actually remembering. Doesn't he play better where they're, what was that? Uh, like that, that post that went viral where it compared, doesn't he play better when there's good strip clubs or was it the other way around? Yeah, No, he, when he, after he has a good night at the strip club, he definitely goes out and drops 60. And so All right. because there isn't there, there may not be that opportunity in Toronto. That's oh, okay. half of the games. You're not without Matisse Thybul and you're without James Harden. So that might be a little bit <laughs> too much for you guys to get over there. But no, I'm on the Raptors here because ultimately I believe they're a better all around team. They, I've said this a million times on the pod. They are the androids from Dragon Ball Z that can just go out there and do <laughs> unlimited energy. They have unlimited energy during every time they play. They play 40 minutes a night. All the starters play 40 minutes a night and they go out there and get wins. I've seen them play 40 minutes a night on a back to back after they just played a multiple overtime game and still get a win. 
So this team is not worried about their depth issues, whereas the 76ers are committed to trying a rotation. And that's Doc. He's trying to get a rotation going, and he's getting inadequate guys in that lineup. So I like the, the Raptors to take advantage of that and be able to get this done. It's only one Matisse Thibel who can guard one player on the Raptors, and they got a whole starting lineup that can score the basketball. Uh, uh, as again, kind of zooming in here for the playoffs, yeah, kind of surprised how much of a fit. I mean, you aren't feeling confident laying minus two ten, uh, winning this series as a Sixers fan. No, that's why I'm <laughs> I'm laying one and a half games at plus one hundred. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Stop! It. <laughs> no, what? It, that's I, dude. They're gonna take care of business. Oh, they're need, gonna win four to we two. Need the guy at the Apollo to come out with the broom, <laughs> broom your ass. You got stage. no one's mentioned Tyrese Maxey. Tyrese Maxey <laughs> is a baller. He's gonna help carry the offense again. Joel Embiid is not going out in the first round. That I am one hundred percent confident. And and you you talk about matchups. No one's guarding Joel Embiid. Like the guy is operating on another level. He's having a historic season. He won the goddamn scoring title as a center. First time that's happened since Shaquille O'Neal. Regular Shaquille season O'Neal. scoring title. Yeah. And oh, did Shaquille O'Neal get, did he get knocked out in the first round? <laughs> no. Exactly. No, he Come didn't. Come on, Ryan. Guys who win the scoring title don't get knocked out in the first round. Uh Harden will turn it on a, in the playoffs. And Maxi is is the guy that's really going to make the difference here. So give me the Sixers minus one and a half games plus 100. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take the dinosaurs against the guys with the muskets. Dude, how dare you? <laughs> I'll save it for the USFL but, uh podcast, but the Philadelphia Stars USFL mascot is is a goddamn disgrace. You can ra- check it out on Twitter, but uh gross. Raptors and in, in what what's the it, Raptors in 6, 5 5 and a half to 1, is that the move? Yeah, yeah, it is. It, I think that the Raptors can absolutely yeah. steal one of these first two games in yep. Philadelphia, and then they can easily sweep the two games at home, especially without Matisse Thybulle. Because while the scoring for Philadelphia is going to be better during those road games, I think that Toronto can absolutely light up the scoreboard and put up one twenty on them. And if you, th- this is probably the series where I might look to play an over as well. Oh, do you? Do like, you have a total I, game? I, I'm, price I'm not yet? seeing any, but. Uh, you know, assuming the, with this price, it's going to be, you know, either five and a half juiced one way or six and a half juiced the other way. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, enough of your guys' nonsense. Let's close <laughs> it out. Um, again, make Sean, sure you, you didn't, you, your gut, there was no pregame pump. How am I going to come in here and back the Sixers if you're not confident? I just went on a, <laughs> on a rant about you, how you're, Joel Embiid was the real MVP. Your He's guns playing aren't at a historic out, level. And you didn't do a pregame pump. I'm not impressed. <laughs> You're a hey, maniac. You can still win MVP. No. Regular season award. No, come on. <laughs> They're gonna give it to Joe Kitch, communist Sean's league very office. Sad right now. <laughs> All right. Let's close it out with some locks. Again, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash NBA playoffs. Get in for you, uh get your bracket in for a chance to win five hundred bucks. And uh make sure you subscribe to the NBA gambling podcast. Gonna be covering it all uh through the NBA playoffs. I think maybe uh, give a lock for one of the play-in games, and uh, and then maybe one of the series, or if you have a another future you like, uh, I'll start things off. Give me oh, wow. New Orleans, ladies first. New Orleans minus five for my favorite game of the playing game. They're gonna they're gonna just destroy the Spurs uh, for my series again. Philly minus one and a half plus one hundred. Sorry, I'm going to break Sean's this soundboard. Sean's views just- are his and his alone. Do not reflect <laughs> the views of the Sports Gambling <laughs> Podcast. Uh, as far as the futures market re- uh, stuff, I like again Sixers to win the East. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude! <laughs> what? Come on, they're going to go on a run. Why not the Sixers over some of these other teams in the East? And I'm just co- promise me you'll use a condom. And, and I'm co-signing uh, Terrell's um, prediction that uh, Memphis wins the West. I, I like that angle as well. So. Those are my East and West picks. Moon off. What do you got for uh favorite playing game? And then uh series bet you like the best. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with the Clippers plus the three plus one twenty five. Oh, on the yeah. line That's a good well. one too. Uh, for the play in tournament game. I think that this depth uh, the Clippers have with Paul George back. I, I think that they're going to go in a, go up to Minnesota, take care of business. And again, Ty Lue, I think it's a huge coaching advantage over uh, Chris Finch there. 
in this play in tournament uh, game. And, you know, they have the experience as well. So I'll take the Clippers there as my play in tournament game um, pick for the series. Um, I don't want to give out minus two twenty, eh, minus two fifteen on the Warriors, but give me the the Warriors in Warriors in six at four to one uh, for a series uh, future price. There, uh, I already know what Terrell is going to take, so I, I left that for him. So I'll go Warriors with six at four to one. Golden State to win in six at four to one. All right, that's a fun one. What about you, Terrell? Playing game and then a uh, series. Future price you like? Look, I've made a name for myself Ooh. on this pod. Doing this over the course of the season, and I'm going to do it again. I've given you out plus 300 multiple times, plus 400, plus 500, plus 600 money lines. Oh Give me the Cleveland Cavaliers plus eight and a half, sprinkle on the plus 315 Ooh. money line because this Nets team is not that good. They have KD and they have Kyrie. That is it. If they can limit the production that those two are doing, I think the Cavs are an all around better team. Look for a Kevin Love showing. Give me the Cavs to get this done in a game that nobody thinks they're going to win. Oh man, that was a compelling case. I, I'm I'm definitely <laughs> glad I didn't lock up Brooklyn. And then what do you what do you got as like a series bet you like the best, Terrell? Ah oh, man, it's. I'm torn between the Raptors plus one and a half and that Bulls plus two and a half, but that Bulls plus two and a half just seems way too contrarian for me. So I got to take it. Give me the Bulls plus two and a half. I don't think anybody is is on this Bulls wow. team, and I'm oh. just I'm just expecting the adjustments. I'm expecting the adjustment of if they shoot the three, they will win a couple games. If they choose to abandon the three like they've done all year. Then, well, this is going to be short, and Ryan's going to get them out of here in four games. But if they shoot the three, then they will win two games. So give me the Bulls there, plus two and a half. I don't think anybody's on that. There's a lot of uh, Suns uh, chatter in our uh, YouTube Slack channel. Uh, username by the that <laughs> goes uh, Arizona Cards Phoenix Suns on God saying uh, Suns will slap the Care Bears. Send them back to Vancouver into hibernation. <laughs> it's been a while since they played in Canada, but I, I appreciate the smack talking. Kramer, boom. What do you Lock. got? I'm a, I, I was, uh, I was, I wasn't copying anyone because I was not listening to you guys because I was over here making formulating some bets. your own stuff. No, I was uh, putting in bets as we speak. So let me pull them up. All right, we're gonna lock up the Clippers plus the. Th well, actually, you know what? I'm feeling pretty feisty today. Let's lock up the money line. Okay. Small dog okay. there. Small dog. Um, let's see what's next. I definitely want to put the Golden State in five and six combined on my card. So play both at plus four hundred. Yeah, that's. Fun. I like doing that better than laying one and a half uh, okay. games, for example. Uh, and then uh, something from the East. Come on. It's got to be the Toronto Raptors. The question is, how do we play? Do we play plus one? And, you know what? Uh, plus one and a half for the Raptors is a mortal lock. But, but the price is so much better. Plus one seventy. Give me the Raptors to win the series again. Dinosaurs beat old guys. Any with uh, muskets, e East and West to uh, win the to win the West. I, I like the Memphis angle. Is is the price worth it at this point? I guess would be my uh, my my question to Terrell. It's it's too late, right? No, it's not too still late. Still not. It's, still, it's, it's it's not too late. I think that it's still a pretty solid bet, and you're getting pretty right. decent odds on them to win. You know what? To win West, added it to the card. Give me Memphis. To Memphis win. to win the West over on win bet plus five hundred. So. All right, and then get what's uh well, since you're looking yep. what what is Miami to win the East. Plus five hundred as well. Done. Sixers are plus four hundred. Done. So I've given you a plus four hundred for the Sixers, plus five hundred for the Memphis Grizzlies. You're going Heat. All right. Yeah. Give me the Heat. So well, I got two five to one conference winners in my pocket. Yep. I'll take that. All right. Awesome podcast, guys. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you subscribe to the NBA Gambling Podcast. Give Moon off a follow on Twitter at Sports Nerd eight two four. And give Terrell a follow on Twitter as well at really rel underscore underscore. And uh, make sure you got sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash NBA playoffs. 
I'll put a link in the app as well for the contest. Your chance to win 500 bucks. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Sean, I'm so, so sorry about your Sixers. Kramer, let it ride.